Double check it, make sure the power's off, and it is. And now I'm going to push that back in there. How it was before. Why? Okay, it'll go. See, I have this screw, this mounting screw is right there, and I can pull pull it out so I can push. I like to pull them out sometimes so I can push this straight in to make sure that I've got enough clearance. That's that's for when I'm installing new usually. I might do that. I guess that's okay. The, the tab, well, let's fix that. The, the tab on the switch is kind of pooched out. And so I'm just going to pull this out a little bit, get my pliers out, and bend it back into place. And I can do that. You know, if your switch is pushed into the wall too far, an electrical outlet. I had to do that on an electrical outlet that I just fixed. And I believe that's going to be on my channel too. It was all pushed in. It's like somebody was roughhousing, banged up against it, hit it just right, and it got pushed into the wall. It still worked and stuff. I shut the power off, put, moved it out like that, rebent the top and the bottom, looked at it, Put it back in the wall, adjusted the cover plate, and it looks just A-OK. -okay. Looks like nobody ever messed with it at all. Okay, so I know I know I need to slide it all the way over to the right. Trying to cover that gap over there. I'm gonna try the best I can, and that means this one's got to be slid over. I had that one slid over. I'm gonna put the cover plate on and just see what I have to do. That looks pretty good about where it is. And see, even if you can fit it on there, you can look at these and this one here could be slid over to the right just a hair further. If I can get it. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to kind of play with the screws. You may have to move this one over a little bit, top left, bottom right, whatever, to see how they line up. And see, I've got it covered there now, and I've got enough. There's, it's still paint on that side. Make them snug. And once you get, once you start screwing it down, you might, you might be able to see once you get it on there what needs to be done because this one here is tight on the edge and there's a slight little gap over there. Okay, so since I'm doing it, and since I'm trying to show you certain things, this is for two gang switches, three gang switches. You can 
you can do little adjustments on there and make it look better. Okay, so this one here, the whole thing needs to go over to the right a little bit. And if, and if I have that one all the way over to the right, and if I still needed to go over, then that means this one would have had to go over to the left a little bit. I'm trying to keep all this pushed over as far as I can to cover that, first off. Okay, that's better. I like that. Don't over tighten your screws. Just snug as a bug in a rug. It's surprising how easy these are to crack. Worst case scenario, hey, you crack one, you go to the store and you buy another one. Okay, so I'm gonna have to tell I'm gonna have to tell Momi the bad news. For right now, I cannot put a dimmer in there until I go back to the store and see. I, like I say, I've never seen a three-way dimmer switch before. I've only seen single gang. And I might surprise myself. I might find one at the store. It might cost me a little bit if they even make such a thing. But if they do, guess what? I'll make another video and show you how I do it. Basically, it's the same way as I would have done to put this one in, except it would have a red wire on it too. And I believe I would have to put a dimmer. I'm not sure. I think, I, I think if I just want to put a dimmer here, I think I could do that with the three-way and not over at the other wall, way over there. Maybe that switch, that three-way switch can stay there. And maybe I would just have to put a three-way dimmer switch on this wall only. I'm not sure about that. I would have, I would have uh, made the assumption first off that if I'm going to put a dimmer in one place, I'd pr probably put a dimmer over here too. But you can decide, you can be the person to decide that on your own. Go to the hardware store, ask a few questions, and do it yourself. Now whenever you get done with your projects, especially electrical, you want to turn your power back on and make sure everything's working. Again, don't make the assumption that, well, I, put, I took it out and I, and I put it back in the same way and I turned the breaker on. Why do I have to go back and check it out? Well, You'd be surprised, every once in a while, 95, 98 times out of 100, you never have a problem. But there's always that one time where maybe you got a faulty light switch, maybe a wire nut on the back side that when you pushed your switch back in there, you hit a wire nut and you had to push it in there kind of hard and it took that wire nut and it moved it just enough and the wire nut could have been loose or it made it slightly loose and now you're your other wires in that particular wire nut uh, it's now causing a short so when you turn your light switch on here you hear it go a little bit and it works you do it again bzzz, and you find out that there's a loose wire nut in there there's a screw that was touching something else or you know all kinds of little silly things could make it that this light switch doesn't work okay so when you're all done Check it out and make sure everything is working again, okay? Now you can call it good. Well, now that I don't have to install this dimmer, what is my next project going to be? Well, you're in luck because I didn't get to install this dimmer. And I had two dimmer switches. I was going to put that one there. I've got one in this closet right here that I was going to put up. Here's the dimmer. 
that I got all ready for that. It's a mushroom shaped light and I was going to put a dimmer on that. And if you want to see that, stick around and keep watching my videos.